Good morning. Now today we're going to uh, take off from where we left off. Yesterday we spoke about the relationship between corporations and consumers. And what we did was we superimposed it to our understanding of governments and citizenry. And we came to the conclusion that uh, maybe it's possible that the whole idea of what the PAP is going through is not dissimilar to what uh, transpired between manufacturers and consumers. So that was the learning outcome. We didn't reach any conclusion, not firm ones at least. Now, in this sharing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one step uh, deeper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the question, what is actually wrong with the PAP? Now, you've got to bear in mind, this is my personal opinion. It's my point of view. So, be forgiving. Now, my whole premise is based on the idea that uh, the PAP is the way it is because it fails to... Uh, it fails to encapsulate many of his credos in an ideology. Now this may seem strange to you because the whole idea of ideology has a bad reputation, but uh, don't get me wrong. All I'm saying is that whatever the PAP has at the present moment is based on the idea of a word, a word that we all know as pragmatic. Now there's nothing wrong with being pragmatic when it comes to, let's say, motorcycle maintenance or even redecorating your living room or perhaps even running a sardine ship but the problem is that when you take that idea and you put it into the wheels of government then uh, what will invariably happen is that you take that word pragmatic beyond its dictionary meaning and this is exactly what we're seeing right now when we look at many of the problems the PAP faces it is not so much a, a problem uh, that is based on uh, how they are doing things as much as uh, where are they going. That is to say, these are problems that, uh, that fail for some reason to articulate the directional uh, purpose of the PAP. And one reason for that, like I said before, is because everything is premised on the word pragmatic. And... Uh, the problem with pragmatism is that uh, there's nothing pragmatic about it. And the reason is very simple. Because uh, if you compress meaning into one word and then you use it to legitimize everything from uh, raising the price of uh, tickets to, uh, to telling people what height the bollards should be on a bus stop, then what happens is that... Um, at some point, that word will will break off. It will lose its uh, tensile strength and resilience, and it will snap. And that makes, makes perfect sense, because uh, when you look at the, the PAP, for example, and you contrast that with, let's say, the communist government, they have precisely the same problem. Here we have a very uh, old oligarch that is based on the Soviet model. And... Uh, it is staffed by apparatchiks who, uh, who have nothing in common with the whole idea of capitalism. And then, on the one hand, you have a, a government that has this policy of encouraging capitalism. So you could say they're doing the right thing, but they're using the wrong tools to do it. And whenever you get the, the communist uh, party system belching out smoke, then you could say that that's where much of their software fails to keep up with prevailing times insofar as it fails whatsoever to address the challenges uh, yeah, that emerge whenever you have groups of people who may have different points of view. So I think this is a, uh, uh, a problem that uh, must be seen in the right context and most importantly scale. Because uh, when people talk about the whole idea of, uh, of pragmatism, it, is, uh, it doesn't make any sense at all especially when it comes to policy for formulation. You, you can say that pragmatism is a good thing, but I don't agree that it's a good thing. And one reason for that is because if it was such a good thing, then why do you think people come up with things like uh, the Constitution? Why do you think they come up with ideas that uh, they feel should not be negotiated upon? 
the whole idea of freedom of speech, for example, uh, if you could step into a time machine and go back uh, to the room where they all pan the Bill of Rights, you could say, hey, chin chai la, you know, never mind la, it's okay. Why don't we leave it open? Because, you know, right now we just have to contend with ivory tooth and candles and bee wax. But, you know, in the next 500 years, America could be a different place completely. They could be invaded by aliens for all they know. So, I mean, why didn't these people leave the whole thing open? Well, the reason why they did not leave it open was because they knew the limits of human nature. That is to say, they were aware that if man is given an opportunity to be pragmatic, 10 times out of 10 times, he will probably choose to be pragmatic. So what they did was they took these elemental rights away and they put it uh, into a cookie jar so that the legislature, the executive, or for that matter, the judiciary, could they get their grubby hands on it. They made it difficult for government to actually entomb all these principles on a wimp and fancy. And I think when you understand why people do the things they do, such as codify ideas or enshrine them, then when you compare this to the whole idea of pragmatism, it makes no sense. I mean, the only country today that I know that uses a form of pragmatism to run its, uh, um, its civil service to its trains is North Korea. And they have this word called Juche. Now, Juche can solve anything from migraine to uh, premenstrual tension in North Korea because it is such a wide word that means so many things uh, that uh, no one really knows what it is. Um, and uh, Juche is a, a problem that the apparatchik would, uh, would invoke whenever they go to villages and they see people eating mud cakes. Juche is a word that uh, Kadesh would invoke whenever they see a nail sticking out. So, I mean, this whole idea of uh, basing society's raison d'etre on just one word itself is uh, the main problem why the PAP has so many problems to deal with. And um, what they really need to do is perhaps sit down in uh, a resort and uh, wear some Hawaiian shirts and, and discuss the whole issue of where is the PAP going? What do you want to do? And in order to do this, they have to go beyond the word pragmatic. They really have to flesh out things like, uh, is there another way for us to measure the whole idea of national health beyond GDP? Is there perhaps another way for us to define uh, organizational and personal success? I think if they do that and they come up with a list, then what it would do is they would, uh, it would allow governments and civil servants especially to look at it as something that is instructional, something that they can, they can work towards. And I think that uh, if they can sell this whole idea to the populace, then I think they're good to go. And I wish them luck.